When Jesus rose from the dead, he put an exclamation point on everything he'd said, everything he'd promised, and everything he'd ever done. Hi, this is John Stemkowski, and it's so good to be back with you today for the next in our series of Encouraging Words. I hope you and your family and the people you love had a wonderful and blessed Easter. Perhaps you were able to get together for a bit and enjoy each other and revel in the greatest day in the Christian calendar, that of Christ's resurrection, Easter. And now that we know that he went into the grave and on the third day rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures, we have amazing causes and reasons to rejoice. So we're going to look into God's word today, all of it in the New Testament, where evidence is clearly given and focus is brought on things for which you and I today, right now, today in our lives, can greatly rejoice. Let's look into God's word. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Again, the focus of today's video is how rich we are in Christ and how much we have to celebrate. That first scripture out of the book of Philippians talked about Christ's death, and it said, though he was fully a man, he was also fully God. And on that day of Good Friday, he gave his life as a substitutionary death to accomplish something that nothing else could, our forgiveness of sin and our salvation. That second scripture, talks about his resurrection and the fact that on the third day he rose again. And if there was ever cause for celebration, that would certainly be it. Because among other things, when Jesus rose from the dead, he put an exclamation point on everything he'd said, everything he'd promised, and everything he'd ever done. Remember, he called himself the Son of God. He said, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up again. And there were many who did not believe. It's a very hard thing to believe, actually, that he would do that. But when he resurrected from the dead, it absolved all doubt that everything Jesus said was totally true. And it's a great day of celebration for us. That third scripture in Acts chapter 2 the setting took place 40 days after Jesus' ascension, and we call that day the day of Pentecost. And the reason that all of the disciples were gathered together is because that's what Jesus told them to do. He said, get in a place and wait. And they did. And they were waiting on the Lord. And at the appropriate time, at the appointed time, at the 40-day mark, as the scriptures say, it was like a mighty wind, like a mighty wind. And then there were tongues of fire distributed on each one, and they began to speak with other tongues. We call that the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you a thought that I've had concerning that for years, and I'm not sure I've shared it with very many people, but it reminds me of when I used to go off to college. And my parents would say, be sure to give us a call when you arrive. Be sure to give us a call when you arrive. And when Jesus told the disciples to wait, to wait for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, it was almost like he called once he was home. I'm home. I've resurrected. You saw me ascend. And now I'm home, seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and I'm sending you my spirit. In fact, prior to leaving his disciples, uh, they were not very happy about that. They didn't like that at all. But he said, it's better for you that I go, for I will send my spirit and he'll be with you. He'll help you. He'll be called alongside to comfort you and give you strength. I'll tell you something, dear friend. The fact that God, by His Spirit, decides to dwell inside of us by the Holy Spirit is an amazing gift and an amazing blessing. You and I are called the temples of the Holy Spirit. We have His life inside of us to guide us, to direct us, to comfort us, to give us strength, and to give us power. In fact, in Acts chapter 1, it says, And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. The infilling of the Holy Spirit took Peter, who had denied Christ three times, Peter, who was totally afraid, and changed him from the inside out, from a man full of fear and doubt, into an empowered man, who went from that upper room and preached and 3,000 people came to believe in Jesus. It is impossible to give enough emphasis on the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Spirit of God. It's one other reason today that you and I can rejoice post-Easter, post-resurrection, post-ascension, and post-Pentecost. That final scripture at which we looked from the Gospel of Luke talks about his second coming. And his second coming is the hope that resides within us and all Christians for centuries as we wait in joyful hope for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. A friend of mine once used to talk to me about her mother and things that her mother would say to her. And she said, sweetheart, there are three things that are important. Someone to love, something in which to believe, and something for which to look forward to. Let me say that again, someone to love, something in which to believe, and something for which to look forward to. Well, if you examine this situation, the someone to love is the one who's done so much for us. How can we help but respond in a loving fashion to how much love God shows to us every single day? Something in which to believe, his promises, his admonitions, and that which he laid out for us so clearly by the example of his life tells us daily by the infilling of his spirit and offers us in his word. We are truly rich people and something for which to look forward. Let me tell you something. It, it, it dwells in the heart of every believer longing for the second coming of Jesus. There's a word in the scriptures called Maranatha, and that word simply means, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. So today, as we look just briefly and hit the peaks of these four scriptures from the New Testament, we see what Jesus did on the cross. He purchased our salvation. We see his great victory over sin and death in his resurrection. We see that upon his ascension and being seated at the right hand of the Father, he sent us a message, and he sent us a gift, his own personage by his Holy Spirit in our lives, giving us power, giving us strength, giving us comfort, giving us all that we need as we walk in close fellowship with God himself, and then his promise that he will return. And one day, dear friends, he will. He will return. He'll come, as that scripture said, in clouds of glory, and written on his thigh, it says in Revelation, will be the word faithful, faithful. And today, you and I live in that season of experiencing God's faithfulness by the presence of his Spirit in our lives and the promises of his word. In each one of these videos, we select a song for you. And today we've dipped way back into the Celebrant Library, into the 80s, when we were regularly recording a lot of what we might call today classic praise music. And this song that we've selected is called Glorious in Majesty. Gives a lot of praise, a lot of recognition to the fact that 
He was born a man, yet fully God, gave his life on the cross, resurrected, ascended, sent us his spirit. It's a celebration, really, of all of those things. And throughout the song, it takes us a little further, and it talks about when he will come again to take us to himself. Well, dear friend, let me tell you something. For all the wonderment and glories of this earth, all the things we enjoy, all the things God has given us, Today we had excellent weather. It was wonderful to have a beautiful day. We have great friendships. We have family. We have blessings of all kinds. But I will tell you this, this earth also is a veil of tears. We're made for better than this. We really are. And the fourth verse of every classic good hymn takes us out of here. And likewise, in this song, it says, he will come again. He will not always leave us struggling through on this earth, but he'll come again, take us to himself, and take us to our reward. So join me in a celebrative mood today, will you? And let's open our hearts and listen to this song, Glorious in Majesty. What a great song of celebration. My dear friends, you and I are rich people beyond comprehension. We really, truly are. God loves us and has saved us. He resurrected from the dead. He promised that he would come and take us to himself again. That should bring forth such amazing gratitude in our hearts and lives. Before we pray together, I'd like to bring forth something that's on my heart. 
Today's theme, of course, has been about celebration and focusing on God and all of his goodness, his greatness, his blessings, his love, his promises, so many good things. But I have a concern. May I share it with you? There are many, many things going on in this world today, whether it's politically, economically, many things that we may not agree with at all, many things that we might find wrong or hurtful. And yet, I would encourage you to not let all of those things that are going on in the world around you rob you from the things that you have in Christ and that no one can take from you. Examine your heart and find out if this might be true. If you find yourself today in a lot of anxiousness, in a lot of hand-wringing, and perhaps most importantly, with a lot of anger, and you find yourself spending a lot of time thinking about these things, these things will bring you down. It isn't that they're not real. Certainly they are. But I would encourage you to keep your focus on things above and not on things below, rather than focusing on the difficult things and the things that are wrong. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, the lover of your soul, and waste not energy in being angry or cursing the darkness, but rather light a light and hold forth Jesus to your family, friends, and even those with whom you disagree. Glorious in majesty, keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ to keep you safe at peace and strong, truly strong, on the inside. He's in control. It will never be otherwise. He is in control. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you today for your faithfulness. We thank you for your substitutionary death on the cross, Jesus, which purchased and sealed our salvation, for your glorious resurrection, which proved everything you said, for the gift of your Holy Spirit, and for the knowledge that you will come and take your people to you once again. In the meantime, we live, Lord. And we pray that you'll give us strength and grant us strength by the presence of your Spirit, the promises of your Word. And when we pray and seek you, that we shall find you. You are glorious, Lord, and to be magnified. Blessed be your holy name. And now, dear friend, I pray for you. I pray that you'll sense the presence of the Holy Spirit very near to you right now, in comfort in strength, in peace, and most of all, in joy. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. I speak to you today a word of joy. Let joy be your portion today. And may your eyes see that God is stronger, in control, much greater than all the circumstances around us. Holy Spirit, minister deeply to our friend these truths and your comfort and assurance today. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for your grace unto us, your mercies and love, and we pray these things with gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thanks so much for being with us today. We've enjoyed, as always, being with you. And I'd like to make one little comment about today's song and the collection of music from which it comes. It comes from an album called The Best of Give Him Praise. And it occurred to me that this may be an album that you don't have. And it contains a lot of classic praise music in which you might be interested. So if you desire that, go to our website. You can download it or purchase uh, a real CD as well. And we'd love to hear from you. Make a comment below or send us an email and let us know how you're doing. And if these videos are of encouragement to you, please take opportunity to share them with your family and friends. And as always, should you need prayer for anything, let us know that, would you? And we will pray for you. God bless you today. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Encouraging Words.